The second form of slavery, state ownership of slavery, has been far more prevalent in history than private ownership. It is indeed today the most prevalent form of slavery in the entire world. The pyramids of Egypt and much of the so-called glory of the ancient world was built by slave labor, slaves owned by the state. People in socialist and communist countries are slaves. They are subjects of the state. The state has as a property right their labor. It can command it at will. And this is a form of slavery which is severe because unlike private ownership, there is no loss to the state if the slave dies or if he is overworked or if he is killed off. They do not operate in terms of profit and loss. They have the power of confiscation. They can always take what they want. Private ownership of slaves was abolished in the United States and many another country around the world in the last century, and slavery was made as a result a state monopoly. It is that in the United States today. The federal courts will not hear an appeal from any employer when he protests that the Constitution, which forbids involuntary servitude, which is slavery, requires an employer to keep books freely and involuntarily for the government of withholding taxes. This is slavery according to the constitutional definition. But no federal court will hear such a case because slavery is by definition only forbidden if private persons own slaves. The state can enslave every one of us tomorrow and has reserved the right to do so. It is significant that the Pharisees, when they were told by our Lord that they were slaves, answered him and said, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? They lived according to the myth that they were a free nation, now, they were actually under Roman rule. But the Romans had made Herod king of one area and placed another area of Palestine under another jurisdiction and had constituted Palestine into a couple of independent or ostensibly independent realms. The fact that Roman coinage was used and that Roman troops moved through the land and that the officials ruled on approval from Rome was often overlooked by these Pharisees as they lived in terms of the fiction that because they had this ostensible independence, they were a free nation. Today we hear a great deal of use of the same fiction. And today we have set free, ostensibly, many a uh, nation around the world. And I believe the Afro-Asian bloc numbers at least 99 states or nations. And these are called by our president and politicians the free nations of the world, together with the others which are in the UN. But a free nation does not mean a free people. In fact, the two concepts are quite different, the one from the other. And we talk a great deal of today about free nations, but nothing about free peoples. The others are free nations and slave peoples. And the purpose of the founding of this country was not to establish a free nation, but a free people. And when the Constitution was written, it was not to give the federal government freedom, but the people. And the purpose of the Constitution was to bind the federal government with the chains of law, to chain the federal government in order to free the people. There is a vast difference between a free nation and a free people. We can be free from foreign rule and be slaves of our own civil order. This then is the second form of slavery. The first, private ownership. The second, state ownership. And the third, the basic, the root form of all slavery, slavery to sin, slavery to Satan.